API gateway implementation uh, for the microservices. Hello friends. Uh, so today's tutorial, I'll, I'll explain how we can uh, use that API gateway. And for that to uh, learn, I have already created two microservices as I discussed in my last video. I hope that you guys already seen that video and what I explained the basics of uh, microservices architecture and what is what is actual need of uh, this API gateway. That's why we are here. So uh, I already have uh, created two microservices. Uh, one is the user microservices and the, the role of it is uh, just to return as a user object similarly i have uh, created the product microservices and again the role of this is to just return a dummy product data so i do not have any database associated with this in any, any layers or anything this is just simple two microservices or web api exposed because our main concern is to learn our web api gateway so uh, also it is uh, working fine to this uh, local host so this is the product one and this is the user one. Perfect. Now let's uh, come here. So what I want, I want to get the data of product and the user in the same call. This you would have done very easily in case of monolithic application where you have all the codes in one solution, right? You have the user product XYZ all in one solution. So you just simply do a SQL joins or entity or framework queries or anything and, and that you uh, get the data very easily. But here, since uh, you deployed your services to uh, two different different actually solutions. So how do we get the data? one solution is you make a two call like we have just did with the postman and then join in the ui or do some sort of stuff but this is this is a wrong approach and this is not the suggested approach so here is the api gateway uh, comes in the picture for the microservices so i want i should have some public url i make a call with get user and product data or anything like this and should have the combined data user and product Right. So this is done in uh, three simple steps using the oscillate. So the first step is you have to download the package from the NuGet because you are using it. So you have to download the package. Second, uh, you have to add JSON file. And JSON file is nothing just contains some sort of uh, implications of the routes, how uh, those APIs will be called, etc. And at last, you have to uh, add the uh, dependency of oscillate in the startup file for your API gateway. It. Once you're done with these three steps, we have the API gateway implementation in place. So let me just quickly add a project, name it anything, web API. And this is, uh, you can see the .NET core with this .NET core application, that's fine. Click on OK, it should add, oh, it should ask for some sort of stuff. So I have selected the MP1 because I wanted to do from the scratch. So we have the web API now, actually. Let me just click the solution and our first step was to go to the new get package. Click on browse, on select, searching on select, nice. Click on this install. So operation failed as real over the region could not be loaded. Okay, I think it was not loaded. Let me re-click. Now this is installing for the new get. Oscillate. And I guess it has. Let's check in the dependency. Do we have oscillate? Yes, we have oscillate. Nice. What is the second step? Second is just to add the configuration file. That is our JSON file. And that I already have. Let me just first copy and then we'll see what it contains. Paste it here. Don't worry about the code. You will already find this code in the GitHub library. Okay. So this is, uh, let me just zoom it. But so uh, there are two important things. One is a downstream path template. Other one is an upstream. So basically, downstream path template is the path of your of your hosted web application. Right? Where do you have deployed? So in my case, for the user, my URL is localhost four four three zero seven API user get user. Let me paste it here. So this is the URL. You can see here, and this is the port number localhost stptbs. Similarly. For the product, my hosted URL is this one. Now, when I uh, make a call, no, where do I actually make a call? That is the question. And for that to answer, just go to API solution, click on the debug mode, and you will find the URL here. Just copy this and paste it here in the 
base url so this is the base url i was talking about in the last video this is the url which is exposed publicly to all the ui to your ui application and all internal microservices whether it's a product user n number of microservices will be called using this url only so you have this downstream you have upstream now what is the key key is basically the unique name of this route this route user and then similarly we have the another unique name that is product why do we use this we use this in aggregates aggregate means what you want to achieve what you want to get so what i want right now is the user data and the product data so in the reroute i have used those keys hey i need user one and the product one. and the upstream part template is the user and product which i explained here as well so this is the user friendly name with which you want to call in this example you will get user and then the get product and user and product it can be anything this is just to remember for the end user what you're exposing that's all so and second step add the json file okay we are done okay we have to add that in the program file so let's open our program file hey i have to make an entry to use this or select file so again where is my step two this is nothing uh oh it's not copied properly too smart okay so this is our oscillator.json file nice what is my third step that uh, means go to here go to the start file just replace this i'll see i'll tell you what is this so basically oscillator just need the dependency to be injected to use this so here we are injecting the dependency and Okay, sorry. Yep. So I have added the contradiction file. I have uh, added the oscillate layer and use it oscillate layer. So this is just injecting the dependency in the starter file. In the program, we already asked it for the uh, oscillate and get on date from this. That's it. We are then just rebuild the solution. Then one. Yeah. It should have rebuild still rebuilding okay after this what we uh, need is that when i make a call with my file okay. when i make a call to this uh, localist 4438 and user and product i should have the data for this it is taken a little bit more time than what i expected but that should be fine okay here's the url localhost 4438 and uh, let's go to our postman and let's make a url here so this is the url and user and product click on here now when i'm making a call here basically it's going to call to the user and product and the user is this so it will make a call ultimately to the localhost 4430 and let me just a breakpoint here get the data for the product one and for the one. now you'd see that although i'm not calling this url not calling this url i'm calling this one this is my web api but ultimately they will call that our host API. yes let's see this click on this send button here we are this is the user data this is the product data and did you notice First, it goes to the user one and then product as we have it in the route. Maybe you need it, need this sometime. And here you can see the output in the one form. That is the user, that is product, which we decided at the start of the video. This is what we want, right? So this was the uh, basic example of the API gateway. Now let's uh, or now we'll see how that we uh, we can uh, add some sort of uh, move our general sort of solution into the API. For example, you you must have the uh, authentication in place. Yes, we do have. So instead of keeping that uh, authentication in one uh, in different different microservices, how this can be uh, moved from there and can be used in the in the uh, API gateway. So that we will see in in next one. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Any query you can ask it, and for code you can find it from the GitHub. Thank you. Have a nice day.